Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at the cumulative generating function of a random variable. This, in this particular instance, it's a random variable x and the cumulative generating function here is given by c of x t. Okay, in some textbooks it's actually known as k of x t, but we'll go with c of t here just to be consistent with ourselves. But actually it could be k here also, k for kappa because we're using this to generate things called cumulants, and they're quite often denoted by kappa. Where, okay, kappa one, kappa two, so on. But anyway, so the thing about this is that the cumulative cumulant generating function is defined as the log of the moment generating function. Really, this is the point of the video. Just start to show connections between things like mo. Um, cumulant generating function and MGF and in some other cases you know the probability generating function and so on okay there are actually two uh, cumulant functions there's a thing called a second cumulative function which is a little bit different it's the log of something else that anyway but anyway we'll just sort of stick with the question here so the cumulative cumulant generating function is defined as this two times one minus t to the power of one uh, minus 10 and then minus one. And yeah, there's the moment generating function there. So the f determine the mean and the variance of the distribution of X. Now, there's a good bit of theory in this really. So the cumulant, the cumulants of a random variable X are defined using the cumulant, cumulant generating function, which is the natural logarithm of the moment generating function there, which is what I just sort of said, okay? The cumulants are kappa n, kappa 1, kappa 2, so on, are obtained from a power series expansion of the cumulant generating function there. Now, so that's it there. That's essentially what we're looking at really is this bit. So the first cumulant there is mu. The second cumulant is sigma squared and so on. Okay. Depending on the case, the uh, subsequent ones could be zero and all that. So, but they, these are the first two are the uh, main ones we're interested in. Okay, the expansion is a Maclaurin series, so the nth cumulant can be obtained by differentiating the above expansion n times and evaluating the result at zero. That's a key definition here, particularly for the, um, particularly for the. Um, what we're, we're asked to do here. Sorry, I just actually realized I'm skipping notation. I've used C above and I'm using K here. So it's not such a big deal, but I'll just be consistent. So essentially what we have to do is like find the first one is the first cumulant is get the derivative of T and then evaluate it, the derivative of the cumulant and then evaluate it at T equal to zero. And likewise, to find the variance, we do the same thing. We just get the second derivative and evaluate at zero. Okay. So the derivative of this, let's go up here. It's straightforward enough calculation. Oh, my screen has just gone blank. I think actually this, this, it's a straightforward enough calculation, but in this instance, there's a little bit of mathematics involved. Uh, what we have to do is get the first and second derivative of this. Okay. Now, 1 minus t to the power of minus 10. So essentially what we're using there is the chain rule, okay? So a uh, derivative of 1 minus t is minus 1, okay? And then the derivative of 1 minus t to the minus 10, just treating it as uh, a variable of 1 minus t, is simply one or well actually let's bring down the minus 10 so minus 10 times 1 minus t to the minus 11 okay and then the the one, minus 1 and the minus 10 cancel out so we get 10 and then we multiply that by 2 we get 20 okay uh, this mi minus one here, you can disregard it. Disappears in the, um, it disappears in the differentiation. So essentially, that's our answer there. Twenty, which is two times one times two times minus one times minus ten. Okay. Uh, twenty 
1 minus t minus 11, okay? Essentially what I'm saying there is actually, just in this instance, the chain rule is the key thing there. So when we evaluate it, like the second derivative there is just get the, uh, do the same thing again. A second time we get exact same thing, uh, 20 times minus one times minus 11 and so on, you know, that gives us 220. So essentially when we evaluate both of those at zero, we get 20 and 220. So the expected value of X is 20 and the variance of X is 220, okay? So that's it, um, yeah. So again, key thing there really is just sort of knowing these definitions, okay? And apologies for not keeping my notation consistent, but it's either, it goes, in some books it's K, in some books it's C. K for kappa, which is the D, uh, notation for the cumulants, kappa 1, kappa 2, and then C for cumulant. Okay, but just watch out for that. A bit of lack of consistency there.